Hey, what's up, VC? It's Steve again, Harmless Rebel, and it's time for another Hard Rock and Heavy Metal update. Um, actually, I believe this is my first Hard Rock and Heavy Metal update of the year. Um, I've been kind of slacking a little bit lately on my videos. Just had a lot of stuff going on um, around the house and just uh, in general. So, um, But I have been... Uh, Recently, I haven't picked up that last week, uh, week and a half. I haven't uh, really picked up too much. I've mostly been going through and uh, cleaning the collection um, and uh, just straightening stuff up and uh, haven't done much shopping. I've gone to a couple stores, but just haven't found anything worth picking up. I uh, picked up a couple CDs here and there, but that was about it. Um, a lot of this stuff is uh, stuff that I just haven't shown in uh, the last couple videos or... Uh, um, stuff I picked up uh, the, the, the first week or two, or the first week of January, I guess. Uh, so let's just kind of jump into it. Found a real nice copy of uh, Fraley's Comet Live Plus One. I think I found, found this for $3, and uh, couldn't pass up on it. The, uh, the copy that I had was uh, pretty trash, so... Um, with the exception of the uh, saw cut there. This thing is uh, pretty much VG plus across the board. So, um, uh, before I go any further and before I forget, in the background we're listening to Shotgun, uh, Delasian Rock. Uh, this is a, a Texas uh, blues rock, guitar rock, elements of hard rock band from the 70s. <coughs> um, these, uh, the songs on this album were taken from uh, uh, some studio sessions they did be between 74 and 76. Uh, and this was just released uh, last year, I believe, uh, on True Angel Records. Um, Greeno actually turned me on to this band. Um, he had it playing in the background of one of his videos and showed it, and I bought it the next day. I just really dug the sound of it uh, and ended up picking it up. And I've, it's gotten uh, quite a number of spins since I picked it up. Really good stuff. Uh, next up, this is an album I've been looking at one of my local stores for a while and uh, finally uh, pulled the trigger on it. Uh, Back to Babylon from Torme. <coughs> uh, the singer of Torme is uh, Phil Lewis, Philip Lewis uh, from LA Guns. Not nearly as good as the, the, the stuff he did in LA Guns. There's a couple of decent songs in here, uh, and if you find it for cheap, I'd recommend picking it up, but I wouldn't go out of my way to grab it. Um, uh, next up, this one is uh, one I expected a lot of and didn't get a whole lot in return, unfortunately. Chicken Foot. Uh, this is their self-titled album. Um, first off, it was sealed. Um, the record store I bought it from, they got it from the manufacturer. Um, you know, I, I know the record store owner really well. Uh, he's, he's not a dishonest guy, so I, it, I, you know, unless the manufacturer repackaged, I don't think it was repackaged. But man, I pulled out the records and they're covered with dust. There's fingerprints and smudges on them. And this isn't the first record that I've got. <coughs> I've bought some on Amazon from Amazon. Um, and uh, one of the Record Store Day albums that I got uh, uh, earlier this year, um, I opened it up and it had fingerprints and stuff on it. Uh, so, you know, just quality control issues, I think, more than anything. But uh, it just wasn't as good as I thought it was going to be. I mean, you got Satriani on guitar. I expected amazing guitar work. And there's some good guitar stuff in there. There's a couple of tracks that I, I think uh, Satriani plays really well on. Um, and then, of course, Sammy Hagar on vocals. Uh, it sounded like uh, some of the songs sounded like kind of a low rate Van Halen Van Hagar whatever uh, and it just wasn't as good as I thought it was going to be you know I don't want to say it was disappointing but it's not something I'm going to go to on a regular basis to listen to I mean it just it just didn't do what I thought that could have been I expected an amazing album Satriani on guitar I mean come on and, and it, it's good hard rock I'll just leave it at that you know I uh, picked up uh, House of Blue Light from Deep Purple. I just, uh, there's not a a, a bad uh, Deep Purple album, in my opinion. They're just an amazing band. This is uh, Gill and Error, Deep Purple, killer album. 
next up, uh, this one shocked me. Uh, I went into one of the local stores. I've talked about it before. It's a CD warehouse. Um, they, they know more about CDs, obviously, than vinyl. Um, and, and their pricing, I don't, I don't think that the, a lot of the guys at the, at the uh, various CD warehouses really know how to price vinyl. And here's a, a great example of that. This is uh, Slash with Miles Kennedy. This is from uh, 2011, 2012. So this isn't the most recent album. It's the one prior, excuse me. And uh, this is the limited version that was on, let's see, on uh, white. I don't know if you can see the white there. And on red vinyl. And this particular, there were two different versions of this. And I don't know what the difference is other than the, uh, the barcode. The barcodes are different. And uh, for some reason, this barcode generally sells for in the 40s and 50s. The other one still sells high 30s, low 40s. Um, I picked it up for 10 bucks. Uh, you know, I, I mean, I would have picked it up regardless. I, I didn't even know anything about the value of it when I picked it up. I just picked it up because I hadn't heard that Slash album. It was uh, in near mint condition, and it was 10 bucks. So, I, you know, I grabbed it. It turned out to be really good. It, it makes me want to pick up his most recent album. Um, I've never been a huge fan of his solo stuff. I wasn't a big fan of Slash's Snake Pit. There were a couple songs here and there that I like. Um, Velvet Revolver I wasn't a huge fan of. I know that's not him. That's a super group. But, uh, <coughs> excuse me. But, uh, I mean, hell, even Guns N' Roses. I, I like the first Guns N' Roses. Uh, the Appetite for Destruction, I love that full album. Every album he put out, they put out after that, there were a song or two. Um, I thought every album that they put out uh, after Appetite for Destruction was completely overrated. Um... But uh, I, I, I really like the, that particular album. So if you haven't checked it out, it's worth checking out. Um, next up, uh, Black Sabbath. Um, this is more the, the, the Tony Iommi uh, solo album that was uh, labeled Black Sabbath. Uh, Glenn Hughes on vocals. Who was the drummer? Oh, this one, okay, yeah. This one had Eric, uh, Eric Singer on it. Glenn Hughes. Um, picked it up. It ended up being a uh, white label promo, which was kind of cool. And then I went to play it, and the first two songs on each side won't play because it's warped. So when I get my vinyl flat, this will be one that I uh, flat out. I only paid a couple bucks for it, so. I mean, the, I, I know the owner of the shop I got it from. I could take it back and he would give me credit for it in a heartbeat. But uh, I'll just hold on to it and flatten it out. Um, this one I picked up because of Greeno and Scott. Um, they both talked up this band. Um, this is a much later uh, album from them. This is, I believe, their sixth album. But Trooper, uh, Flying Colors. Um, good song. Good song. It's more, it, it's more kind of an AOR sound, or and I don't even want to say AOR, uh, just a softer, a more rock and roll sound as opposed to uh, the, the hard rock sound that uh, I understand their first couple albums were. Um, still, I, I dug the album. I'll definitely be keeping it around the collection. Still worth checking out. This is another one. That same day I bought that Slash album, this was there too. This was Six Bucks, Alice Cooper Show. Um, I've always dug this album. Um, they had a repress come out uh, last year, the year before, that goes for. Uh, every time I see it, it's like twenty nine, thirty bucks. And then I saw this, and I thought I was grabbing the original, and it turns out that this is the repress uh, from two thousand thirteen. And they just priced it really cheap. I, I don't know if they thought it was an original because I, I see the originals. Uh, and, and you know this is in really good condition. The main reason I bought it, but I see the originals uh, pretty regularly for you know about that price, seven, eight, nine bucks. You know, but that was really cool to, to see that it's the repress. It sounds really good. Definitely worth checking out. Um, this is another cool one. This is uh, Deep Purple. When we rock, we rock, and when we roll, we roll. Um, this is a, just a comp. It, it spans. Uh, 
uh, D.O.N. Gillen era, uh, Deep Purple. Just full of killer songs. This one was thrown in uh, when I went to the, my record store. Um, I bought three other albums. This one wasn't priced. I asked what he wanted for it, and he just told me to take it. This is uh, Crazy from the Heart, David Lee Roth, mini LP, mini, uh, or, or, mini LP or EP, whatever he called it, four-cut EP. Uh, California Girls, Easy Street, Just a Gigolo, and Coconut Grove. So uh, California Girls... Um, Man, I want to say 1994 or 95. Uh, I lived in Phoenix at the time, and uh, KUPD had a call-in contest uh, where the first person to call in uh, and answer a question won tickets to uh, see Reverend Horton Heat, um, who I had never heard of at uh, that point. I got to know him very well later and became a huge fan of the band. Uh, well, I got to know him... Uh, when I won this contest, but uh, and became a huge fan, fan of the band after that. But uh, uh, so the contest question was, uh, what was uh, David Lee Ross' first uh, first hit after he left um, Van Halen? And the only thing I remembered from that era was California Girls. And uh, like ten people called in, and they were just coming up with crazy stuff. Half of the stuff they were saying were Van Halen songs. Um, so I got through. I was probably like the fifth person that, that they that they add, or that that answered that, that called in. And I said California Girls. And I won the contest. Um, just amazed me. It was a hard rock and mostly a hard rock and heavy metal station. It, it surprised me number one that they were giving away Reverend Horton Heat tickets because I didn't play Reverend Horton Heat on that that station. Um, but then all these listeners uh, that didn't know. I mean, they couldn't. They didn't know the difference between the David Lee Ross songs and the Van Halen songs, which just uh, kind of surprised me. Um, so these next two are, are, are pretty much related, and they go back to the Alice Cooper. Actually, um, the first one I picked up was Billion Dollar Babies, Battle Axe. Uh, Billion Dollar Babies is basically Alice Cooper the band minus Alice Cooper. Uh, once uh, Alice Cooper took on the name. Um, and the band basically disbanded. They created this band, based, uh, obviously named after their biggest hit at that point. Um, it's okay. Um, there's a couple of good songs on here. Um, it, it definitely proves that they needed Alice Cooper to be um, really successful. And then I also picked up this, and these were both like two bucks a piece. And uh, one of the members of this band, and of course the Alice Cooper band, was Michael Bruce. Um, and this is his solo album. I wasn't really feeling this at all. There, there's one one song on here that I kind of dug. Um, the rest of it's just okay. Uh, I wouldn't run out and grab either of those. And then these next two, uh, I was surprised to run across because I, I don't really see either of them. Um, and I think I paid like three bucks a piece for these. Um, Mahogany Rush Live. Killer, killer, killer live set. Um, the covers on here are real good. He does a, a cover of Purple Haze and Johnny B. Good. Um, he does another one too. I can't remember what. Uh, doesn't matter. Uh, great, great album. And then again, uh, Frank Marino and Mahogany Rush tells of the unexpected. This one he also does uh, all along the Watchtower. Uh, Norwegian Wood. Uh, so a couple of good cover songs there as well. Uh, these, uh, this next one I got off of eBay, man. Uh, this thing was in pretty much near mint condition. Um, every once in a while I go onto eBay and I'll just type in metal vinyl or metal records and uh, just see what's uh, and set it to the the, the audit or the auctions that are about to end. And every once in a while, I get something uh, really cool doing that. And this was one of them. I paid five bucks for this. Um, and like I said, it's in, in pretty much near mint condition, other than you can see where the, the corner was been a little bit at one time. But other than that, it's uh, uh, beautiful. Uh, you know, obviously, uh, uh, an absolute classic for Judas Priest. Um, not my favorite album. Um, I would probably put this right in the middle, probably uh, my fourth or fifth favorite uh, of their albums, but definitely uh, a landmark album for the band. 
And then uh, I, I showed this on the uh, VC when I was listening to it. This is another, this was one of those deals where they wanted a little bit more than what I wanted to pay. It wasn't that much though. Um, and it was, uh, there was only like 30 minutes left, so I just threw a bid in. I, I was pretty sure I wasn't going to win, and I was really surprised when I did. But, uh, Testament's the new order, and it's uh, signed by the band. Um, unfortunately, and I didn't notice this at the time, it's not signed by the band that played on the new order. It's signed by the, uh... Uh, 95, 96 era uh, version of Testament that didn't include um, Alex Skolnick, but uh, still, it's got the, the the Chuck Billy autograph on there, uh, right in the middle. And I really didn't buy it for the autograph. I, it, you know, I paid a little bit of a premium. Uh, I paid about ten extra bucks for the album, uh, ten extra more than it was than it would have been worth without the signatures. So, um, and, and they sent me a picture. Uh, of the band signing it, so I thought that was pretty cool. But uh, Testament, and this is uh, probably my second or third favorite uh, Testament. I'm, I'm a huge Testament fan. I really need to get going on my Testament collection. Uh, it's just that every time I see it in the shops, they want crazy prices for it. Um, and I just haven't, uh, I mean, I see it on the internet here and there, and I just haven't uh, gotten around to getting the stuff yet. I've been on a, a, a real big Judas Priest kick lately, trying to get the Judas Priest collection completed. But uh, And then I picked up a couple of CDs. One of the CD stores um, that I frequent uh, has been selling stuff for two, three bucks. Uh, and, and I picked up some really cool stuff. Speaking of Judas Priest, I picked a couple of the uh, remasters up for um, two dollars a piece. These are from 2001 when they remastered them. And, and the main reason I picked them up is number one to listen to in the car. But uh, each one of these remastered uh, uh, CDs they did, you can you can tell by the silver uh, outline. It'll say the remasters here, and then it's got the uh, the little flame image. And when you get them all and line them up, it, it's a, a little image. I want to. It, it, it's uh, basically makes this image right here. I don't know if you can see that. It's kind of hard to see. There we go. Makes that image there in flames. But uh, I couldn't pass them up for two bucks. But like I said, each one comes with one bonus track and one live track, uh, which I thought was pretty cool. Um, the live track or the bonus track on here is red, white, and blue, which I don't think is that good. Um, this one's got Thunder Road though, which I do dig. So. Picked those up. Also picked up uh, Live Bites from Scorpion. This is a really good live uh, live album. Um, this is the BMG copy. Um, I picked up uh, Heaven Can Wait from Gamma Ray. Um, this is, uh, I don't know if they considered it a, a, a mini uh, LP or an EP, uh, but it's basically a, uh, a five song single. Uh, picked up, uh, this is really good. This is the uh, anniversary edition of uh, Deep Purple's Machine Head. I can pull it out. It's got the uh, original cover. And I paid, again, man, two bucks for this. Uh, this is killer. So CD1 is the remastered original album. Uh, CD2 is the Roger Glover remixes. Um, now, CD1 also has uh, When a Blind Man Cries, which is a B-side. Um, maybe I'm a Leo, uh, which is, uh, and, and Lazy, which are uh, quadraphonic mixes. Um, When a Blind Man Cries is an amazing song. I can't believe it wasn't on this album. It's that good. If you haven't heard this or heard that song, check out that song. It's really, really good. And I really dug that song. Uh, and then the, the, the quadraphonic mix of Lazy is amazing too. Lazy is one of my favorite songs on this album. I don't think that song gets enough credit. Uh, you know, everybody talks about Highway Star and Smoke on the Water uh, and Space Trucking, but uh, man, Lazy, that song just kicks ass. And the quadraphonic mix that they did for it's even better. Um, and then again, like I said, CD2. So you got uh, CD1 right there. And then CD2, which is the remixes. So just a killer album beginning to end. I, I mean, it, that, that album's an absolute classic anyway. But uh, definitely worth having in the collection, uh, the 21st, or the 20, uh, is it the 20th, or just the anniversary edition, they call it. 25th anniversary edition. Um, so that was cool. 
that it? Then I also picked up. Yeah, let me do this one too. Oops. Dropping stuff everywhere. All right. So this one is one I pick up every time I see it. It, it always blows me away uh, when I run across it. Uh, this is the uh, that that first or the early uh, CD pressing of uh, Kill 'Em All, and it's the one with uh, I don't know if you can see that with uh, Am I Evil and Blitzkrieg on it. Again, uh, this one was three dollars, but it was a uh, buy two get one free thing they had. Um, so I, you know, obviously I got it less than three dollars, but. Uh, um, you know, these things still go for 10, 15 bucks, uh, at CD stores where they know what they're doing. So anytime, uh, I run across a copy of this, I pick it up and I actually, uh, traded my last copy, um, just a couple months ago, a buddy of mine really wanted that for his collection. So I traded him for an album. Um, so it's cool to have that back in the collection again. And then this one really surprised me. I really wasn't expecting much from this album. Um, but for, uh, I actually got this at a pawn shop, or I'm sorry, at a uh, Goodwill, so, what, 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 a dollar fifty, I think the CDs are at Goodwill. This is, um, Alive and Well from Quiet Riot. This is their 90, 1999 album. Man, this is really good. Um, it's a lot better than I thought it was. Um, you know, after Condition Critical, um, their next album or two, uh, they started introducing uh, the keyboards or the synths, whatever. Um, and it, it was still hard rock, but the synths just kind of killed the sound a little bit. Um, this just goes back to kind of that, uh, that, early, that early 80 roots. Uh, it's just straight up hard rock. It's really good. And then the bonus tracks are uh, the 1999 versions of Sign of the Times, uh, Don't Want to Let You Go. The Wild and the Young, Mama, We're All Crazy Now, Come On, Feel the Noise, and Metal Health. Um, and there's no groundbreaking stuff in those, the 1999 versions. They're just re-recorded versions. Uh, you know, they sound very similar to the originals. Um, but the actual album, this album was really good, and I recommend picking it up. If you like um, um, Metal Health and you like Condition Critical, this is in that same vein and uh, definitely worth checking out. And then I also picked up some other stuff. I uh, also picked up uh, these two. The rest of it's uh, there's a couple more I picked up, but those are going to be VCLT for people, so I don't want to give that stuff away. Um, I picked up Black Acid Devil from uh, Danzig. Now I remember when this came out. Um, I was a big Danzig fan at the time. I still am. I really like I, I really like Danzig, but. Uh, um, I didn't like this album at all. Uh, I, I couldn't believe what I was listening to. Um, he had gotten rid of, uh, John Christ, who was an amazing guitarist. Um, a completely new band. And, and this, he was, uh, kind of, uh, jumping on that industrial bandwagon that was going on at the time. And... I just didn't dig it. I, and the funny thing was I saw him a few months after this came out. Um, it may have been the next year, but when he was torn for this, I saw him at the very first uh, OzFest, which was nothing compared to what it was, what it would turn into a few years later. Um, I think it was like six six or seven bands, if even that. Um, you know, it was uh, him, Sepultura, Black Sabbath, um, Slayer, um, I said Black Sabbath, Ozzy Osbourne, it wasn't Black Sabbath. Uh, and I can't remember, that there may have been one other band. Um, those are the main ones that I remember, though. Um, and I was mainly there to see uh, Slayer, Sepultura, and Ozzy. But he was there, too. And uh, he actually only played one song off of this. Every other song that he played was either uh, one of the Sam Hain songs or uh, from his first uh, three. He didn't even he played one song from Danzig Four too. It was basically um, stuff from Lucifuge, um, Danzig One, and then from uh, How the Gods Kill. So, um, but I went back and listened to this, and there are a couple songs on here I like. It's not something that I'll spin on a regular basis, but uh, I, I do like it a little bit more than I liked it back when it came out. Um, and then I picked up uh, 34.788% complete from My Dying Bride. Um, 
I've never been a huge fan of the My Dying Bride vocals. Um, I do like the music, though. Uh, and it, it just kind of, it was, it, it's decent background music when you're, uh, I, I think I was uh, listening to that in the background while I was cleaning some of those records. So, um, another album I don't recommend just going out and buying, but uh, it was definitely worth checking. I just didn't, I hadn't heard a whole lot of My Dying Bride, and I picked that up at the... Uh, goodwill for a dollar fifty so uh, that's pretty much it guys I've rambled on for way too long um, I will have another update in the next few days uh, um, SMF Captain Howdy um, John has requested that I show my KISS collection so I'm going to do that for him it's actually the second time he's requested it and it was something that I wanted to do anyway uh, you know everybody's been showing their KISS collection lately so I wanted to throw mine out there as well um, so I'll try to get that up in the next uh, two or three days, so keep an eye out for that. Other than that, uh, take care, VC. I hope you guys enjoy the rest of your weekend and have a good week, uh, and take care.